Hi everybody, I'm Allie with Potomac Beads. Join me in creating this Byzantine drop pendant. It's a great flowy piece featuring some chain mail. So if you need any of the rings in order to do this Byzantine, go ahead and look at the description below for links to those that you can use for the piece. I'm going to be doing this with a six millimeter 18 gauge jump ring. You can also do it with a five millimeter a uh, 19 gauge or 20 gauge ring will also work. So if you want to go smaller scale, you totally can. Gather up your materials and an 8 to 10 millimeter bead or bead collection and we'll get ready to get started. To create our Byzantine drop pendant, you are going to need two pairs of pliers. You can do two needle nose, two wide jaw, up to you. I have sitting here 18 gauge, six millimeter outer diameter jump rings in my rose gold color. If you want to, you can downsize into the 19 or 20 in the five or four millimeter. Those will also work for this Byzantine. We're gonna be doing chain mail. So this is linking rings together. We're gonna use approximately 48 or 49 for our piece, and we are going to open up these rings. When we open these up, and when you're doing chain mail, you're gonna hold one side, and twist to open the other side. So I'm twisting my hands to open on the other side of that ring. The reason that I'm doing that is because you don't wanna lose that perfect circle that the jump ring already is. So again, I'm gonna open another one, find that slit in it, you can see where the opening is, grab on with one hand and turn the other. You want the opening to be big enough that you can get another ring easily to fit inside. I would suggest opening up all of your jump rings before you even get started, so that way you don't have to put your tools down to open more. So just pick up your ring, open it up, put it down. Go ahead and open up all your rings and we'll get ready to get started assembling them into that chainmail look for our Byzantine drop pendant. So we're gonna begin our Byzantine with a piece of wire. Seems kind of funny, but I said you needed a feet, uh, a foot, excuse me, of the 24 gauge wire. You're gonna use just a couple inches of it. Cut that off, and that's gonna be your starting piece. You can also use a paper clip if you want to. We're gonna take two rings that are unopened and just twist them like a twister tie onto that wire. That gives you something to hold onto as you're starting and creating your piece. From here, we are gonna do a series of three groups of two. Byzantine by, it's gonna be two groups of two. So on to that first group of two, I'm gonna add another jump ring. Pick up my pliers. And now to close our rings, you wanna close them past where you think they're gonna close and you'll almost feel them kind of spring back. You wanna get your rings closed nice and tight in order to make your Byzantine secured. Grab another jump ring and put it on to that group of two as well. Close that up. Again, past where you think it's gonna close and then I'll spring back in. So now we have two rings that are connected to two rings. We're now going to do a third set connected to those second two rings we just added. So that third set here is gonna link on to the second set Going in and closing that up, there's one. And two, linking onto there. Now this next thing can be a tiny bit tricky. So you may wanna have a jeweler or a beading awl here to help you to accomplish this. So I have that piece of wire that's just my scrap or my paper clip hanging down. And you wanna take the last two jump rings. See how they're both kind of falling to the left? I want one to go to the left and one to go to the right. I'm gonna let them go the whole way down to the right and the left. So they're sitting next to that, those first two rings. What I'm then gonna do is kind of use my fingers to push them up so that they're sitting wide on the bottom and more narrow on the top. Take the second group of rings now and do the same thing turning one to the right and one to the left. So I'm gonna turn my hand so you can see that action. Once you have those separated then to the right and the left, this opens up a gap and has the top two rings there are actually the third rings that you put on in the rotation. Those third rings that you're grabbing on, they look like the second because the way that we pulled them back 
are what we're going to grab onto and do our next first set of two. So I'm going to let go of this so you can see it again. We have our three rings here. The last two sets of rings fold one down to the right or front and back, and one to each side. From there, pinch them down next to the starter two rings. That automatically pushes them up toward the center and you fold back the second set of rings, which makes kind of that little floral design. Go ahead and put your beading all there and just let it sit there for a second while you grab your pliers and your next jump ring. Once you have that and you have the nice hold on it, go ahead and attach the next jump ring into those center two rings, which are actually the third set of rings that we put on in that first set of three groups of two. Go ahead and close that up. Now it's gonna feel like a little bit of a tight space. Grab your next ring and you're going to repeat that, going through those center two rings. When you go through those center two rings, you wanna make sure that you're not also putting your ring through the ring you just added. When you're done with that, you have started your next set of your Byzantine. So it's gonna end up looking like a little bit of a knot there. Here's my next first set of two. So just like I have this set of two that's attached to my paper clip or my wire, this is going to be the first set of two. I'm going to add two rings onto this. There's one. Put that down, add another onto there. And here's where I'm saying, see how it wants to connect to that ring that's already there? Just connect to the two previous rings. You're not intersecting the rings at all that you're adding each time. So two rings went on that caught onto the third row of rings from the previous Byzantine section. I have then two more that just went on, and I'm gonna have two more that go on to there. So you're always doing a repeat of three groups of two. Once you have your three groups of two on, that's when you start to do your fold backs and get ready to link your next rings in. So, looking at the all, I'm gonna pull it so it's just pulling apart. So I have my set of two there that linked into the middle of the previous grouping of three rows of two. Then I have my second group of two and my third group of two. Once again, keeping an eye on this, I'm going to fold down to the right, fold down to the left, use your fingers to kind of pinch those rings up, and then fold the second group of rings to the right and the left, creating a nice opening in here. That opening in here then completes our second Byzantine, which is going to look like they're facing each other. From here, go ahead and grab your next set of two rings, and then we're just on repeat. So you're gonna grab your two sets of rings, on that goes, close that up, grab another ring, on again through those two rings in the center there. Once again, close that up. Be aware, don't open your rings too large because what can happen then is it gets trapped onto the next piece as you're trying to bend them. From here, I'm just gonna evaluate before I move on and see how I did at closing my rings. I noticed the one's a little bit off, so I'm gonna go back and close that completely. And then once again, this is my first set of two that I just added. So then again, two more get added to this group, two more get added to that group, and then I start that fold once I have my three groups of two. You'll notice when you look at the Byzantine then, every other section you'll see that the rings face in, and then if you turn it, you kind of have the Byzantine sitting the opposite way. You're going to do a whole collection of these till you have a grouping on the side when you're looking at, at it of the complete Byzantine rows till you have four. One, two, three, and four. If you want to, you can do this loop smaller and just do it with three rings so that way it pinches more into, you can either do a diamond shape or you can have it nice and rounded and open so it looks like it's nesting inside. I'm gonna continue till I'm done again another couple rotations of this till I have four that look exactly like this. Then we're gonna grab our wire and connect our pearl to the center. Once you finish your Byzantine stretch here, and you can see four facing Byzantine repetitions. One, there's your group of two, two, three, four. 
You want to end where you group into your set of two, and then I want to add, take off that piece of wire that we had at the starter side and just add one of your jump rings on either side. I have my 10 millimeter pearl here, as well as a piece of my 24 gauge copper wire. I'm going to put my pearl through the copper wire, and what you can do is you can grab on here and kind of see how it's gonna look sitting in the interior then of that teardrop. You can see where you want to attach to the side here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it and I'm going to attach here right on these two on the exterior. So what I'm gonna do is take my pearl off, grab my round nose pliers, hold an inch down and make a loop. If you need practice or help with that eye pin, we have lots of videos for that on our YouTube channel. When you're looking at your piece, you have your forward facing one and then two. You're gonna to go to that middle section here. So it's actually your first pay or your first Byzantine, one and then two, your second. It's side facing. So you're not gonna be able to see those two rings, but you wanna put your needle through there or your wire through there Make that loop go over both of those rings. And then go ahead and coil some of that little tail around itself. I'm gonna do three coils. Then you wanna grab your wire cutter and cut off the extra wire. From here, you're gonna put on your pearl or your gemstone or whatever else you wanna add. You could add some crystals in there. And then we're going to come over to the opposite side. So you're going to count over. Again, there's your first, oops, there is your first Byzantine on either side. And you're going to count over and you're going to make your loop. And then we're going to attach to the rows here along the side that you can't see. So go ahead here, grab your round nose pliers, make your loop. And you want to make sure when you're making your loop and doing your eye pins, that your eye pins will be facing in the same direction. So if you look at your pearl and your eye pins, they're facing the same direction. Come over to the other side and grab on to those side two rings. There's one, there's my sides. Put that wire through the side rings there. That can be a little tricky, but you can do it. Go ahead and get that loop into those rings. It's gonna be a tight fit around the base there. So you can hold with your round nose pliers, do a half a turn, kind of flip it a little bit, do another half a turn, tuck the wire underneath the piece that you're working on, bring it to the other side, and you can see I have a very short piece of wire. Tighten that up, do a whole nother complete turn, making sure that your copper wire here is not attaching to any of your jump rings. Go ahead then and cut the wire down. Grab your needle nose pliers and just pinch along that coil, making sure that it looks pretty like the first one. From here then, you're gonna kind of push that down towards the center and grab those two jump rings, bringing them toward the top. Once you have that sitting in there correctly, right on the bottom and you have it matched on the sides, grab your last of your jump ring here Open it up if you still need to. And then you're gonna link on to those fo two forward facing jump rings. So you can see you have that little nest right there sitting. If you want to, with the 18 gauge, you can put 80 seed beads on here. I'm gonna just close it up. past the point where I think it's gonna be closed, and then I'm gonna add my cord right through the top. If you want to, to add your cord to this little nest here, you can add your cord so that it's front facing and that it hangs nicely. So if I have my leather piece here, I'm gonna grab my leather. I love the look of pearls and leather. Take both pieces of leather, 
go through that loop and I have one and a half millimeter leather loop the two ends through the end of the cord and bring it up towards the center you have that nice mixed metal kind of boho look and just need to put some ends on your leather to finish up this nice little uh, Byzantine drop pendant. Thanks so much for joining me in the creation of this nice Byzantine drop pendant. I love the look of the chainmail along with the leather and the simplicity of the single pearl. Remember, if you do need any materials, go ahead and check the links below to shop with us online to gather those up. Remember, you can do this with multi colors of rings as well as do it with two different sizes which you can check out on the site. Remember, you can add a grouping of crystals in the middle, and if you want to, you can even make that Byzantine a continuous circle and join the ends together. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads, as well as post your pictures of your Byzantine drop pendant in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this mini chain mail lesson and have fun continuing and creating designs of your own.